somewhere on the far side of 400 pounds, the baby blimp, George Harris III. Your referee, Dick Raines. Well, up in the ring, you're looking at Dick Raines, and now that's Paul Bosch up there, and this is Paul Bosch sitting here in the studios of Channel 39, about to watch himself. You're watching George Harris as he moves around to express a few opinions about what's happening on the outside of the ring. Dick Raines, who has been in that ring enough times to know a rare spectacle when he sees one, is about to witness one. And there you see it, the pink elephant, George Harris III himself. An amazing spectacle, if I do say so myself. So with the bell about to sound for this one fall to somebody's finished match, let's get it started, say I. And um, the effort to test the strength of the neck of George Harris, of course, is primary in wrestling. You always try to see how strong the other fellow is by pulling his head down and seeing if he can do something about it. But George Harris III seemed to think that because the match had started prior to the bell, it was time to... It was time. He presented the target, and you just can't avoid or uh, miss a target like that. It's hard to restrain the impulse to do something that is ungentlemanly as I did. On the outside of the ring is Bronco Lubitsch, who is kind of reversing the procedure. It's generally George Harris III who is coaching Bronco, but right now we've got the coach on the outside to give a little bit of help to the brains on the inside, and that was not help that he needed because George had a big fist, and the hold him and hit him technique here finds its mark. The side head lock is applied by a beefy arm. You've got to admit that George Harris III has unusually sized arms, but he also has unusually tender legs. And if you can find them with the correct side of a chop like that and hit in the muscles where it'll do some good and bounce them where it'll do some good, then you take a little bit of the starch out of them and please some of the fans out there on the outside of the ring picture of a man who probably wishes he was someplace else, although I did enjoy the battle with George Harris III. There's Bronco coming around there to tell George Harris what he did wrong. On this particular night, what he did wrong was to come into the ring. But he does make a fast move when it comes to getting out of the ring, not always quite as speedy getting in. But don't ever sell Harris short because he's big enough to be tough. He's had enough times in that ring to leave some of that toughness backed with uh, experience. Right now he's caught in a Japanese arm lock. You see him helping his left arm with his right and being able to push and marshal enough strength to uh, force uh, himself out of it. And of course this pleases him. Anything that pleases George Harris makes him strut. And when he struts, that target comes around. <laughs> So George Harris III has avoided one arm lock, but this was one he had forgotten about and probably hadn't seen anybody apply in a long time. The underneath approach to it and it achieved the inevitable result. And I hope Clarence Shields got a good picture of that because I know that Bronco Lubitsch, as he distracted referee Dick Raines on the outside, wasn't interested in pictures or anything else. You saw it, and the quick reversal of this particular hold was due to the fact that the referee was trying to keep somebody else from interfering. A little bit of push, a little bit of help to try to straighten out that arm and to keep him from being in a position to use all of his 400 pounds. That's the effort that's being put forward here. And you get tilted off balance that way while the referee isn't looking and things happen. And if it works for one, it works for the other, even though Dick Raines frowns on it when he sees it. Doesn't always see it. That's the problem. Harris has more hair than I have, so the hole works better. And Dick Raines is determined to get that hand off of that hair, and he did. Left me with a handful of hair, but uh, that was preferable to being caught in, in an arm lock. So in spite of Bronco Lubitsch's protestations on the outside of the ring, we can get right back up into that ring again where the pink elephant is having his words with Dick Raines. Double wrist lock for George Harris, and we're going to lift him up for a body slam. At least that was the intention. Well, you see if you can lift George Harris up for a body slam and get him any further than I got him. <laughs> a little bit tough. It's even tough to sit here and watch and remember the expenditure of energy that, uh, that went with it. But I always work on the theory that if he, there he goes, sliding into second again. And if you can work on a man's underpinnings enough, you're going to break him down to the point where you can uh, beat him. 
And Lubitscher is giving him a pep talk, telling him that this team just can't bear to be beaten by an old man like that one walking around up in the ring. So waiting for Harris to come back, Dick Raines tolling the count, and Harris still smarting from the chops on the legs. Harris suffers from TB, two bellies, but um, not a deadly affliction all the time, just an uncomfortable one when it, gets, when it gets in your way in a match like this. So Harris is complaining about the edge of the hand, and Dick Raines is comforting him by telling him that it's quite all right to use it. Harris again now with that standing arm lock that he figures he can use well, but the, here is his effort to apply a full Nelson and my effort to get my neck straightened up so that I can do something about it because when you chew, that will help. And that noise actually came from George Harris III. I think I was uh, playing a rerun on it because I heard it at the time and it has stuck right with me. Like the scars I got on my shin from falling into that chair. So Harris is ready, and now so am I with a long windup. Really nothing to that long windup. I'm not going to throw it at him unless the pitch is right, but I think that it always tells a man your intentions, and uh, if he wants to back away from them, he can. And nobody ever got killed while the other fellow was backing away. Side headlock, George Harris, and that big fist of his comes around. Yes, right smack on the nose, and that's the reason for the reaction. He holds that hold well because his arms are properly sized to um, snatch you around in a side headlock. And here you get a close-up look at him with those knuckles ready to dig into, into the face and that big fist ready to punctuate it. I don't know what Harris is making a face for. He's not caught in the hold. He's just trying to hang on to it, and I'm trying to slip out of it or get knocked out of it. And here is one of the best moves I made against George Harris during during the night and you can see that the fans thought so too and you can tell that he thought so stick around because the moment this match is over we're going to show you by using K channel 39's great slow motion machine what can really be done with a hold like that Harris will not approve of it but maybe you'll enjoy it body scissor is the hold and as Dick Raines said to George Harris if you don't give up he might knock your brains out and uh, Harris decided that he would risk becoming an imbecile and take the punishment. Ooh, that's the way it felt trying to get 400 pounds over in that particular hold, but fortunately it worked. <laughs> and as Harris goes outside, he has had some of the wind knocked out of him, the first opportunity I've had to do it in this particular match, so he must get some new advice from Bronco Lubitsch. Pat on the back won't help much, never does, especially when you're the fellow who's going to go back up in and try to trade tricks with someone else. Long arm and the wind-up makes Harris at least stay away from me whether, <laughs> whether I accomplish anything else with it or not. And that, of course, is the thing that most people miss about some of these gestures, that you gain a moment's respite for yourself. And again, the inevitable target. He may be sitting on one target, but he also presents a, a target in front, so that's the way to get at it. I don't know why it, I was telling Dick Raines at that particular time. I think I was telling him that I would prefer to wait until George Harris got up just a little bit and made an effort to defend himself. Harris, as he backs away, gives Bronco Lubitsch an eye there. And Lubitsch, if you will watch, no, you can't see it, just jerked my foot out from under me, and there comes Harris on top of me, and most people, including me, thought that this was the end of the match. My legs were just long enough to wrap them around the rope, and Dick Raines was just kind enough to say that that um, was enough to constitute breaking the hold. And this is the way you feel when you've had 400 pounds drop on you. You really need help to get up. So... Harris, and here is a body slam, and somebody said that I slammed him to the canvas. I really dropped him, but it had the same effect. And George Harris III recognized the target, too, and there it happened again, but he missed, and when 400 pounds misses that way, it's just like slamming him to the deck. The hold is a sleep hold. The hold that I 
used on numerous occasions and have been using for a long, long time up in that ring. And there it's beginning to take effect. And you can see George Harris just about passing out as Dick Raines raises that arm and drops it several times. And then we drop George Harris. And some of my friends in the background were kind enough to be happily excited over it. The hand raised in victory. And um, I enjoyed it. I don't mind telling you. I enjoyed having the hand raised. Here through the miracle of push-button wrestling is a bounce that registered number nine on the Richter scale. Yes, the miracle of slow motion and computerized television. And here's the hesitation bounce. It's easy with a machine. I wish I could have done it that way, but bouncing George around just isn't possible. And this is the way it made him feel in slow motion. As a matter of fact, just take a look at that. I think he burped, but uh, I'm not quite certain. <laughs> And here is George Harris in action. You never knew that he was really a flying gazelle and that he actually had moments of hesitation when he couldn't make up his mind. But I'm glad he didn't make up his mind because when he did, this is what happened. And he came down right smack on both of those bellies of his. And I want to tell you, that smarts. And we thought you might enjoy this little different look at Channel 39's Houston Wrestling.